Hey, everybody, and welcome to My EdTech Life. I am so, so happy to be back, guys. I was off for about two weeks, just took a nice little break. I feel recharged, and I am so excited, highly caffeinated as usual, and of course, today with an amazing guest. So it's amazing getting some rest, taking care of myself, taking care of some things, and then getting to come back with an amazing show to kick off the month of April and for our shows that are coming up. So I'm really excited to be here and just enjoying the PLF and all the support. Thank you to the my personal learning family. And so again, I'm excited to be back here. I'm hoping that you guys are having a wonderful morning, having your cup of coffee, maybe some breakfast, whatever it is. Maybe you finished your workout, but thank you so much for joining us live today. So if you don't mind on the chat, please let us know where you're joining us from. We'd love to know. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask any questions during the show. So today, We've got an amazing show. We're going to be talking about some edgy goods, or in other words, some uh, teacher tools that they can have in their teacher toolkit. And we've got the amazing Amanda Schaffner here, who's joining us all the way from Ohio. So Amanda, thank you so much for joining us here today. How are you this morning? Well, I don't know how Amanda is, but Samantha's doing Samantha. great. Samantha, <laughs> oh my goodness. I tell you, I'm just highly caffeinated, and I think it's because I also saw Amanda Macias, who's joining us. So, Samantha, I do apologize, no, but I love fine. your answer, and I know, I know. It's one of those things. I Look hope you're that. well, Amanda. Hey, I'm so excited to be back, and I'm getting guest, guest names wrong and everything, but hey, that's no, how it goes. Fine. So we're live. I'm, just, so I'm doing great today. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Oh, Samantha, thank you so much. And it's just been great just to, you know, getting to know you, you know, just back and forth and emails and everything and just excited. And I thank you so much for making the time to be here and just share some resources because you are definitely uh, an um, amazing edu leader. You know, you post so many great resources. So, um, Samantha, just tell us a little bit more in context, you know, your role in education currently. So currently I work for career prep high schools. Um, we are a dropout prevention recovery district in Ohio. Um, our operation is run by a management company called Fusion Ed. So we're actually expanding further out than just Ohio uh, with CTE programming and all of those good, uh, you know, 21st century, you know, authentic work related sort of training programs that come along with a high school diploma. So that's sort of what career prep is all about. Um, this is actually my first year with Central High School. That's the school that I work at within the network. Um, I'm an academic coach. I am also a uh, licensed principal in the, in the state of Ohio. So I do a lot of co compliance reporting and decision making regarding what tech tools we are going to, you know, integrate into our suite. And I also am actually teaching uh, English full time right now just because, well, we need an English teacher and that's what the, the budget says. So when you work for a charter, you have to really keep everything above the red line. You cannot go below red. <laughs> so no. whatever you got to do to get things done, eh, that's what you do. So that's kind of been uh, a lot of my hustle on, you know, where I got to where I am today. But um yeah, I've just really uh, taken to educational technology over the years. And um, I've been com very competitive in my field for a long time. So like when I feel like I'm bored within my own job description, that's when I look into other things like, oh, I can try this little impressive thing. So next time we have a PD, I can, you know, show this off or something like that. So that's how I sort of started building my stamina and uh, like you mentioned in one of your last episodes, like building your creative brain muscles, you know, yeah. um, making sure you're up to to snuff on all the stuff. Yeah, <laughs> well, Samantha, I mean, this is amazing. Like, you know, just all those hats that you wear. So I just like to talk a little bit about that just, you know, before we get into some of the tools you're sharing, because I know with many hats, you have to, like you said, be well-versed in all those areas that you just touched on because you are pretty much that sole resource for your organization. 
So you have to wear those hats. You have to know all those resources. But tell us a little bit about how that role, you know, how how is it? You know, I know right now, you know, during pandemic, there's there are a lot of teachers that are like on special assignment and maybe have one additional role. But how are you managing, you know, some of the things, you know, the the self care, you know, things of that sort, you know, to take care of yourself, obviously. Well, that's, you know, I. I hate to say, I'm like, I never think about that one. I do a therapy <laughs> when I'm asked that question. <laughs> so I guess that's one thing. Um, but I suppose, you know, the whole, you can't take your work home with you doesn't really work with a position like this or with, I guess, being a creative, you know, you have to have those extra hours to be able to figure out, uh, I guess, what's next level. Like, you know, I'm not the type of person to sit around and let someone else tell me what's best for my kids before I actually try it and look into it and look at the data and see, you know, if that's the, the case. Now this year, I will tell you, um, you just said like many teachers have an additional role. People have no idea how hard it is to run a live class every day, even if it's just one, especially if you are, uh, if your expectations for your content and, and your, you know, your learner needs are like all over the place, you know what I'm saying? So um, I prep those classes up to four hours a day. So that's been the biggest challenge because my administrative role is also pretty large as well. So you know, I, I don't know if people understand that running a live class dirt while you're doing all this other stuff is it's hard if you're going to keep your Bitmoji uh, straight and you're going to keep your Google Classroom straight and you're going to make your own materials and not just borrow everything. And that's just the way that I'm wired as a teacher. Um, so I've kind of tried to step away from some of the perfectionism so I can get everything done. Mm -hmm. um, so this year I haven't been able to make my own tests every day. Uh, now it's more like three days a week. I'm able to, you know, make some kind of lesson or you know video and upload something that's in a sequence or a module playlist or something like that uh but being able to juggle those roles especially with the kids in the building is hilarious because they <laughs> they want to stop you in the hallway like you know how many credits do i need to graduate and like all of these things and you're like here here's a health packet uh bring that back to me like tomorrow by five and like i gotta go to this meeting and you know this report for the states due by four so see you guys uh, i'll, I'll yeah. be upstairs <laughs> And that's one thing that I, w I was curious about, you know, like you mentioned, you know, they stop you in the hall. So it's like, OK, wh which hat do I put on depending on the question? So is, is this an administrative question? Is this a teacher question? Is this, you know, so and so, yeah, so I'm like, at wow. The time, I panic. That's my bad. That's what I'm trying to figure out this year. Like when the kids get me in the hallway, I'm like, oh, uh, uh, you're doing great. And usually <laughs> I mean that, you know, but come get me later. <laughs> And I love you so much. I'm so sorry. Wow, Samantha. Well, just to thank you so much for just uh, sharing that with us, because like I said, I know that there's so many people that are out there that, you know, are, like I said, wearing many hats and the mm -hmm. difficulties that come about, like you said, with running a live class. And mm -hmm. I was just reading an article earlier this week, you know, saying, you know, sometimes you know, I, I, I think that we're more or people can be more burnt out than we really think. And I think a lot of it is just since it's become a new or or a norm now, you know, of the way that we feel, we're like, oh, no, no, we're OK. But in reality, it's like we're like really running off fumes and we're just like really just going out there. So I, I can't imagine, like I said, you know, with those three roles. However, I, like I said, I do see some of the work that you have done. And, you know, I know that our educator community is so thankful for a lot of the things that you share and, you know, your collaborations, your conferences that you do and your blogging. So, you know, I, we really do. And I personally too also do appreciate that. So thank you so much for that and what you do to help, uh, you know, equip teachers. And one thing that I like that you mentioned is, uh, you know, how you strive for perfection and now it's kind of like, you know, I just need to get the content out there. Mm -hmm. And I know at the beginning of the year, that was one of the things that I told the, our teachers actually back in March of last year when we first started with this, you know, because you can literally spend 
hours just getting like one video done. And <laughs> then, you know, the kids watch it and it's like maybe like a one minute video, right. uh, but you want it perfect. I was like, just get the content out. The kiddos, I mean, look at the content that some of them see, you know, on YouTube for, you know, or things. It's just short. It's it's rough, you know, but it's the info that's out there. So I think that would be a good tip, too, as well, is kind of mm -hmm. set that little perfection aside a bit, but oh, just yeah. get the content out there mm -hmm. because that's what we need to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, to piggyback off that, I, uh, I had to, the recordings, you know, the, that's the thing when you're sitting there making a recording and then someone goes outside and starts like snow blowing. Um, or, you know, your neighbor in a condo next door is getting like their floor replaced. <laughs> you're yeah. just like, uh, okay. Like I, I used to stop and, and start over. And then now my advice to all my teachers is just get it done, do your best and accept those little, <laughs> those little hiccups yeah. that come along the way because they're going to come and you're yeah. going to be in an international <laughs> webinar sometime and it's going to, your internet's going to go out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so right now I'd like to thank our guests that are joining us. We've got Omar Lopez uh, from Texas. We've got Deborah Zeman from BFW. My We've girl. got Amanda also who's joining us. And so Deborah just she made a great point here. It says parents don't understand that we as educators wear a lot of hats. Same with the kiddos. And mm -hmm. then, of course, here we also wear a mask a lot or wear a mask a lot of the time to cover up the stress and so Amanda, <laughs> Amanda also adds, you know, progress over perfection. And of course, perfection has gone out the window during this time. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> so it's just one of those things where now it's like, hey, what you see is what you get. And, you know, that's something that I, I'm very much so like that. I'm like, hey, what you see is what you get. But I'm, I'm giving you the info. It's up to you to make your magic happen. Make it on your, you know, I'm showing you. In other words, it's like I'm showing you how to steer the boat and, mm -hmm. you know, but here, here are the instructions, and then you just kind of do that on your own. But, you know, we have seen a lot of uh, posit positive uh, aspects of this where we have seen teachers thriving as well. We have seen some students thriving as well. And, but, of course, you also see the other side of it, you know, And uh, but it's just hopefully, you know, we, we can definitely find a solution for all of that and just come back to a balance and, and see what we can do to help all our teachers and help out all our students. So... Thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, hey, so let's go ahead and get into the meat of this combo. And of course, you know, today's topic, like we were talking about, is just adding, uh, you know, to the teacher toolkit. And I know that you brought a plethora of some awesome sauce edu goods today. So I'm going to go ahead and pop your screen up. And then that way you can go ahead and get us started on some of the journey, uh, you know, through some of the edu goods that you have. So teachers can go ahead and check those out. So here we go. All right. Awesome. So forgive me for a second. I'm trying to make sure I can see these things. No worries. Okay. That's important, right? <laughs> right. Is my, my screen, you can see the entire. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're good. Okay. So, um, I will start with, I guess, just going over the apps that I, I want to talk about today. I don't know if we'll get to all of them, but uh, the app that I use to create this uh, idea spark primarily was Wakelet, and then it turned into a, a triple app smash uh, sort of adventure with Buncee and Flipgrid as well. So uh, this project, um, you know, shows many of those. Uh, tactics that I use to sort of merge those resources together, um, just how I thought that they would work best. And at the time, I was not an avid Buncee user. Deb actually uh, helped me get to that point in this project because I like I knew that I wanted to do some kind of simulated Twitter chat, but I wanted I wanted it to be more aesthetically pleasing. So Wakelet uh, and Buncee are two of the tools I'm going to be talking about today. Um, I'm also going to talk about Edge Elastic because obviously data is extremely important. It's not everything, you know, data engagement, sort of uh, SEL, it all, it all goes together. But, you know, I have found an app that I absolutely adore that 
does save me time. It saves my teachers time. And it's been helpful for our district to keep some consistency um, with benchmarks and, you know, student progress monitoring and that kind of stuff. So uh, we actually used Edge Elastic this year in lieu of uh, NWEA for, you know, whatever the vendor assessment requirement is to measure growth, which was pretty cool. Um, so I'll talk more about that later. And another app that I want to talk about is newer to me than some of these apps, but I love it so much. Pear Deck uh, is awesome. And as an academic coach, it was really a great um, skill to learn how to use Pear Deck because when you run TBT meetings and you're trying to model best practices, to your teachers, you need to be able to, you know, interact with those tools with them. So using Pear Deck and their interactive slides just made it a really fun way to, to try to engage people because those meetings are difficult. Um, you know, a lot of people, and it, it's not really a, a fault of anyone, but people take offense when they're being trained on tech stuff out of the middle of nowhere, like on a Wednesday, just because they're like, does that mean... I'm not teaching well enough. And so that's, I was trying to get teachers out of that general mindset if they were in that by using Pear Deck to say like, how are you feeling today? Or, you know, why don't you draw like what you think the word bewilderment means <laughs> in this sentence or something like that. So Pear Deck is also um, something that I'm going to discuss today. And then uh, I Google Classroom just, the importance of learning management systems, whether it be Schoology, you know, Blackboard, whatever you use, um, the importance of, you know, consistency and being able to take advantage of those uh, really versatile tools to help organize and disseminate content and control the, the workflow in and out for students. So that is uh, what I... Uh, kind of brought to the table today. All right. Well, hey, I hope we can get to all of those. So let's go ahead and get started. So right. what are we going to be talking about first, Samantha? Okay. Um, what I will show you first is this uh, Chromebook App Hub Idea Spark. Um, I am a Wakelet ambassador, and I'm actually from the, the first round of Wakelet ambassadors. Um, my friend and mentor, uh, Dr. Randall Sampson, got me mm -hmm. into Wakelet a, a few years ago um, when I was actually still a full-time classroom teacher. Um, he was our, well, he's probably still is the blended learning uh, oh, consultant for Millennium and many schools across the country, especially in Columbus, Ohio. And he's got the best ideas and he's so enthusiastic. And, you know, uh, Dr. Samson would come in and show us these tools and I would kind of, you know, get little tidbits of information. And I finally, you know, uh, formed relationships with the team at Wakelet and just sort of uh, went out there on a limb and said, like, I'll blog about this or I'll research this or I'll beta this. And... I guess I'll show you guys a little bit of uh, what I came up with on this Idea Spark project. They were looking for um, a way to show people how to use Wakelet on the Chromebook uh, app hub. So right here, we don't really need to look at all of these lesson plan items I put in there. I can definitely get back into that, but I want to show you, would it be, can I uh, show this video at all? Is that like a thing? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, if you shared the window, it'll you'd have to check off the audio. Sure. Yeah. Okay. That. So I don't think they might hear the audio. However, let me see. I think I have, do I have that window open? If I have that, I can go ahead and share that with you. But you okay. can continue and then, you know, I can yeah, come back yeah. to that right now. So, um, well, with this simulated student Twitter chat, I actually came up with this sort of last year as I was trying to engage my kids in conversations about characters and books. And then it just became, um, you know, another way to, I guess, discuss content where they had more voice and choice involved. 
Um, they actually, I had the same group of seventh and eighth graders for three years. So they're proficient in using Wakelet to share their writing. Um, now I, I took things a step further by uh, pushing a collection that we had made last year and then sort of adding things that I would have done with them if those features were available, you know, at the time, because Immersive Reader was available at the time that I created these, this collection before it was edited and, and perfected for this idea spark, which took sort of a long time to make. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I want to show you how awesome Wavelet got, is. I've got the video queued up okay. if you need me to share that. Yeah, yeah so share go that. ahead. And yeah, you can kind of see how this works. I am in collaborator mode, which this is my favorite way to use Wavelet with students. Um, I actually included a an episode of the Wakelet Boathouse where I showed different ways you can use the collaboration with your students. So they are building these important communication skills and 21st century skills and feel comfortable and can thrive in that type of environment. Um, so anyway, you know, the directions are very important. And these little arrows right here keep things in order. So you can move everything up or down. Um, you can control the amount that your students can uh, edit things so you can put things in a certain place and they can't move them up or down or you can give them full you know collaborator rights we'll call them. so anyway um this just says respond to the questions choose four there's our voice and choice and some differentiation there um refer to the pdf messenger i included that because that's a type of media wakelet support so you can see it below for here and then there to join the collection okay and after that um, they will review the Buncey and review the exemplars. The exemplars are going to be in the form of text um, in Q and A format, like a Twitter chat. All right. So I don't. I didn't know how long you wanted me to play the video, but okay. you know, this is wonderful that you have included this already in this idea spark for teachers to go in here and see these ideas and how they can integrate Wakelet. And I love that you were on Boathouse. Uh, you know, because I was on there too as a guest, so that's amazing. So now uh, okay. we've got two people here. <laughs> here so that's I awesome. That. <laughs> uh, so. You know, uh, so this is the kind of the amazing resources that you have available for teachers here. And this is a this is amazing. I did pop in the link uh, for all of you that are listening are going to be rewatching the show. The link will be in the video chat. But if you go to our podcast page, I will definitely make sure that I share all of these links with you there. So you can go ahead and get your hands on these resources as well. All right. Yeah. And there's this I have a step by step blog that tells how I created this um, on Wakelet's blog site. So I'll throw that in the private chat so you can throw that in there as well. Sure, no problem. Awesome. And yeah, something else about this particular project was I was having them respond with Flipgrid videos, but I gave them a choice. If they weren't comfortable with that, then they just did the typical, you know, A1, you know, restate the question. I tried to have them use the the race method when they were answering them, but using Flipgrid to respond um, thoughtfully to these questions uh, was a was a great, I guess, um, discovery uh, yeah. that I that I feel like really made things more fun for the kids because they got to choose. So. I think I think that that's so important, um, you know, because right now as I'm getting ready to set up our summer PD here in our district. Uh, you know, the additional layer that I'm doing is on creativity and, you know, of course, giving choice, but amplifying that creativity where you get a learning artifact and whether it's, you know, using Adobe Spark or using something to create, but getting the, the students more engaged and for teachers to actually maybe even have a visual or an auditory learning artifact to hear or see what their students are learning, the way they interpret that learning. Like, I love what you said, like draw a picture of bewilderment. What does that mean to you? Or what is that? And, you know, we forget that that's also a way of learning. We've got multimodal learners. It's not just, here's a handout, here's a digital handout, just fill it in, fill it out and so on. But allowing them to create really, you know, enhances the experience. And I think for teachers to have that learning artifact 
as evidence of growth or, you know, ways that they can see like, hey, you know, I need to kind of maybe steer things in this way or steer things that way and so on can really help. So I really love that you are definitely promoting, you know, voice. Yes, that that's really important, you know, to me. Uh, the The voice is the part where, you know, we're meeting them where they're at because we're not going to know, we're not going to be able to meet every learner where they're at using one uh, method. You know, I even like to let them choose the questions they're going to answer. So, because, you know, when I'm in a Twitter chat, I try to go to as many as I can, especially when I'm tagged on something, but I don't always answer all the questions. Like if I answered two or three in a meaningful way, that's great. So that's like another way to be able to sort of personalize it for the students so they can all feel like they're contributing and, you know, they love actually sharing what they think about things with one another. So, you know, I have my Wakelet page pulled up right here. And I think I probably have like, oh, 50 to 70 class collections where they responded um, to whatever we were talking about that day. It was typically a Newsella article or something regarding literature. Um, but yeah, you know, the participation would vary, but they really learned how to write pretty well um, using this method because I would share their stuff out to Twitter with their permission. They would only put mm -hmm. their first names on these things and, and they loved it. They were, they always thought it was so cool when people would see their stuff yeah. on Twitter. And, especially the authors and, and stuff, I love so. that, you know, because it's, it's an authentic you know, audience, you know, it's mm -hmm. not just like, well, I'm mm -hmm. just presenting here to class and so on. It's like, wow, these are people that I've never met who don't know me. And it's out there for the world to see globally. And imagine just yeah. somebody getting a response, you know, from somebody a, a, across, you know, the country or across the nation, yeah. across the globe on, and commenting on something. I mean, that's pretty exciting. You're like, wow, mm -hmm. somebody read my stuff. You know, that's yeah. great. Yeah. And especially during a time where, kids are uh, students sorry <laughs> are um they're a little cagey about the political climate and so giving them opportunities to discuss uh you know what's going on in our world because it's not a lot of these things are pretty scary um, and letting them express how they feel about those things is pretty eye-opening as well so uh yeah my kids really they loved using Wakelet. We really um, would actually, they would confer with me before they turned everything in. Because at the time that we started doing this practice, and, and this was a different group of students than I have now, um, they would actually be like, you know, Ms. Shavner, come here. You, I need you to help me edit this before I turn it in because I want to make sure that it looks, you know, polished and perfect. And did I follow the race method? And, you know, oh, like, did I win? Is mine the best one <laughs> this time? If I put like, my Google Doc of it in, do I get extra points? <laughs> you know, so, yes. um, yeah, yeah, it was really great for that. That's awesome, though. I mean, look at that, just that excitement, just with, mm -hmm. with an assignment yeah, yeah. like this and, and engaging and so on. I mean, this is this is great, you know. And again, it, this right here, it, it's not a worksheet, you know. No. And they're still no. learning that's taking place. You're still hitting, you know, multiple modalities. You know, you're doing the writing, you're doing the listening, you're doing. I mean, even kinesthetic, you know, they can record yeah. themselves if, if certain activities and so on. So multiple modalities, and then again, an authentic learning artifact, and that's yes. what I love. That wakelet yes, the uh, in combination. Oh, in combination, like Deb said in the chat, like the the trifecta of EDU, you know, right here. So that's amazing. <laughs> mm hmm. Oh yeah. And I love Wakelet as well because it's like the coolest professional learning family. I, I like how you say PLF. I'm all about that. Um, I just love everyone I've met through Wakelet, you know, I, we just have this great bond and everyone's so enthusiastic about, you know, uh, making change and sharing resources and just encouraging, you know, everyone to think critically and to, you know, give students everything that we can, even when we think that we don't have the wherewithal to do so. So, you know, Wakelet is 
is great. Those the conversations that I've had with my POF over the years and just all the support. Um, I couldn't feel any more love from a, an ed tech app. I'll, I'll tell you that. But I mean, Edge Elastic. Well, we're really tight too. So, <laughs> but yeah. Awesome. And See, you, are, you're an ambassador for Liquid as well, right, yes. Don? Yes, I'm also an ambassador. So it's really exciting that this will be one of the things, too, that, you know, just slowly adding layers to what we're doing in our district as well as to not overwhelm teachers. You know, that it's been, you know, I've been trying to do some things, but, you know, it, it, it is overwhelming for a lot of them. But this summer, you know, hopefully with that little bit of time off that they have and, you know, we've got some great courses and definitely Wakelet is going to be one of the tools that we're going to be going over, which is going to be great. And, you know, now I've got all these wonderful links that I can share with the teachers that the teachers can roll with. So again, it, this worked out very well. And so I'm really excited about that. And like you said, everybody that we've met, you know, through Wakelet has just been amazing. And it's just, they're just pure awesome sauce and always willing to help and collaborate. And that's amazing. Right. Yeah. And you know, the other part about the team that's so great is they look for our input. You know, it's like, oh, can I meet with you on said date? Let's talk about, you know, how this would help teachers or how it wouldn't or what, you know, needs changed about this. And I know that a lot of teachers are involved in these types of conversations with Wakelet. And it's just really great to watch them like change and upgrade the app and add all of the features that make learning accessible for kids with differences. Or, you know, if you need a translator and now you got immersive reader or just they're, I guess, following the need of the market. Uh, according to what teachers need and not, you know, monetizing, I guess, at every opportunity, like a lot yeah. of companies do. So. And, and I think that's one of the best parts, like you said, the, the feedback, but also that it is completely free. And right. it, it's kind of like, you know, they're, they're, they're building the ship as they go based mm -hmm. on our educator feedback, but they're doing a wonderful job and being very intentional with it. It's not kind of like, okay, so this is what they're asking for. Let's just, Put something together and mm -hmm. kind of like just put it out there but they're they're really intentional and i think that that's something that is great so mm -hmm. kudos to all the the whole wakelet family yes, all yes, the wakelet wave writers for sure <laughs> yeah oh and they're awesome too and so supportive and positive it's great i suggest anyone become a community uh, member leader ambassador because it's a really good resource oh all right. So what else are we going to be going over today, Samantha? What else? Uh, yeah, I know you you popped in some other links over here, yeah. some, a couple of other things. I did put the, the blog post or a blog post, the Triple App Smash Madness. I did put that in our chat. Awesome. And again, all our listeners, you will be able to get all of these links as well on our pod page. So stay tuned for that. That'll be coming up shortly right after the show. And that way you can access and you can go ahead and even create your own weekly collection yeah, with yeah. some of the resources that um, Samantha has been sharing. So that's awesome. All right. So some edge elastic. All right. Yeah, so, okay. Um, I'm assuming not everyone in the world knows what edge elastic is because it's, I guess, kind of a specific uh, app. So I'll go ahead and explain what edge elastic is. Uh, first and foremost, it's a, a digital assessment platform that has also evolved into much more than that over time. Um, they're based in Fres Fresno, California. I don't know if I'm saying that I right. I think it's Fresno, maybe. Fresno. 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 Okay. So anyway, uh, they actually had a lot of updates um, over the summer. And now we've got Edge Elastic 2.0. But my personal Edge Elastic story is about five years running. Um, I definitely, I can't even describe the amount of value added. Um, you know, I'm, and I'm talking about test scores, and I know that those are not everything. But uh, using this app, you know, and using it in a way that engages your students and still utilizes the resources that are within the app to help with state test prep. My kids grew like 200 percent over a year and a half, um, you know, with their state tests when I was using Edge Elastic with them every day. Now, the setting I was in when I learned how to use Edge Elastic was the middle school setting, and I've only... 
Uh, it's not like I've just dipped my toe in it. I taught three years of middle school. So I was off of like a eight year stint of high school or so. And then I went into middle school having come from teaching high school half a day and then being a director of digital learning half a day. So <laughs> I started, right. That's a whole another story. <laughs> like, um, right. I, but I started creating these, uh, well, I guess this is how I'll, I'll, I'll explain this. I was required to have an exit ticket every day that was following this, the benchmark standards of the week that were set by the administrators. So at this time, I was not in charge of the edge elastic suite for the district or anything. Somebody else was. And I uh, was learning how to, um, you know, use the app I guess, to benefit my students most. And I realized that one question or two questions at a time is probably a better way to go um, because they, they're not going to answer 50 questions a day. But if they're learning slowly, sort of chunking this process um, with the kids, they will eventually be able to, you know, complete a, a longer test in a class period. But the way I learned how to use Edge Elastic and what I suggest to new users is make a new question every day. Just make a one question exit ticket or entrance ticket and apply the content that you're using. You know, you can borrow their questions, but I think writing your own and using their questions as a guide is the best way to try to give the kids the same experience that they're going to have on the air or so, exit test, I suppose. So, Samantha, we had a question here from uh, Amanda. All right. So, Amanda, Samantha, it's okay. Hi, so, here, yeah. <laughs> so, it says here, is this Ipsative assessment? I'm not even sure if I even pronounced that right, but yeah, okay. that's the question. So, is this, uh, you know, determining the student's progress based on their earlier work? Is that what Edge Elastic kind of does? Yeah. So, um, it does keep track of their mastery across a grade. So they have a grade book um, where the kids performance per standard will be listed. So the way that the 2.0 has rolled out actually has many advanced um, reporting features that weren't available before. So you can watch a kid's progress over time in a standard you can really chop these reports up in any way possible. They have, you know, response frequency per tech enhanced item. Like, you know, do kids like drag and drops or are they not doing them at all? Are they spending one minute on these or five? Um, you know, that and also, yeah, we do measure their, uh, their growth over time. So with this um, blog I have up on the screen, I actually was uh, tasked by my soup this year to come up with an alternative way to give a common assessment because NWEA was quoting us at above $10 a student uh, to be assessed. And so we were just like, oh, you know, that's not very, the utility value in that is, is much lower than something like Edge Elastic. So it, it didn't take me much convincing. I mean, it didn't, to them, to the, you know, my superintendent and the others I was presenting to um, about why I thought this would work well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, before this summer, it might have been a little more different to have like a alternative vendor assessment using this because the you couldn't control everything like you couldn't time the test. There wasn't um a safe browser, I believe at the time, you know, they didn't have all of these bells and whistles to make sure that this was something that could be done securely. And now it's, it's totally, uh, it, it's a very secure way to, to administer a test like this. And it's also great because you're mimicking the experience that kids are having on the air um, or whatever other state tests they have. Um, but I think I'm, I'm digressing at this point. So I'm trying to sort of figure out where I was trying to get in with that. Hold on. Well, just to clarify too, because I know you said you're measuring the expenses, but you did state you do work for a charter school, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So sir. that just to clarify, or maybe even just to help us all understand too, 
the the I guess the the finances for a charter school mm -hmm. as opposed to a regular public school, it, there is is there a big variance in that as far as what you have available, you know, to for resources? Um, that couldn't be more of a true statement. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, and that's why I was asking because maybe somebody, some of our listeners may have not caught the, the first part and they say, well, oh, well, instead of using that, you know, let's use this. But I mean, again, it, it's coming from, you know, that charter school yeah. perspective. However, like you said, let's look into it. You just mm -hmm. never know. There's always those little gems that are out there that we, we haven't even scratched the surface on so many platforms. But luckily you're here and you're sharing this with us today as well. Yeah, yeah, I know that's totally that that's how I feel about it as well. Um and I I think that you know four dollars so edge elastic costs four dollars per student. That's how that breaks down. But the really great part about it was like I just called some of my buddies over there and I'm like, look, we need a site license and they had it set up a meeting with me and my superintendent and my colleague um, that was helping me with this project it, two days later. And then we had, t uh, you know, training on the advanced testing tools and the admin side. And then we actually controlled the whole thing being noobs on the, you know, on the admin end. And for four schools, we were able to, you know, control that assessment and make sure that it was, you know, turned in for our district, uh, our regional district anyway. But uh, yeah, we got to use a test that we designed, you know, together um, using blueprint standards, but sort of making sure we had lower level um, standards available as well. So everyone had a chance to show some demonstration of mastery, even if they weren't coming in at grade level, because mm -hmm. with, with dropout prevention kids, you know, it's rare to come in. At grade, at grade level. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely, I got my English class hipped to edge elastic before we gave the common assessment and they were actually really excited when they're like, Oh, we're using edge elastic instead of NWEA. And they, they took it really seriously. Uh, you know, they were completely quiet in the room the whole time and just I think they enjoy working with the tech enhanced items and they could tell that I made the assessment myself, which is funny, too, because you can make the questions, you know, uh, relatable to your kids. And, you know, it was just a really cool experience to be able to create the assessment, uh, teach the teachers how to manage it as much as they can on their end and then talk about the data you know, what it was showing, what, what was trending and what we needed to sort of be practicing. Um, so these kids will be able to score proficiently on these graduation tests. So uh, my training with the teachers was more on how to build a common assessment and how to run this platform. But as far as Edge Elastic's concerned, I've been building uh, remote lessons using this tool, uh, you know, playlists, so like modules, um, writing videos that I've made and just putting these into assessments that you just click, you know, share your module with your Google Classroom and then it's da 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 They know exactly what order they need to go in oh, and nice. that could be a whole week of That's your nice. Class. Yeah. I was going to ask. So, for when you mean when you talk about tech enhanced questions, you mean mm -hmm. you have uh, you know drag and drops like manipulatives, things of mm -hmm. that sort. Yep, yep, okay. yep. Um, I will show you. One. Yeah, if you can, I know that for example, our our state, you know, is going to be moving more towards the you know manipulatives and drag and drops for online testing. So mm -hmm. we definitely want to make sure that our students are well familiar with tools and are well versed with, you know, the, these types of questions and scenarios, because that's something that's very, very important. Yes, yes. So I'll, give me one second here. And I will. Yeah, no worries. So in with Edge Elastic, everybody, the filters, you really got to learn how to use these filters. That's, uh, that's money. <laughs> so <laughs> just know that if you ever feel super frustrated, just go back to their YouTube channel that tells you how to do everything. Make sure you're looking for the 2020, you know, the updated videos. Uh, but yeah, this is a, 
it's it's something you kind of learn every day. So let me try to find recency. Mm, okay. I will show with some tech enhanced items and doo -doo -doo. hold on just a second. I'm gonna put this over here. No worries. And while you're doing that, um, again, thank you so much to everybody that's watching here live. Thank you, Mel. Mel dropped by. Mel joining us from Colombia. She dropped by. Thank you so much. And of course, Deb and Amanda and Omar and everybody else that's watching us on Facebook, Twitch. Uh, you know, they're watching us on Twitter and of course on, uh, let me see where else, and of YouTube, of course. So make sure that uh, you follow us, hit the subscribe button, and we definitely appreciate that. And so we're checking out these. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's an assessment I created um, on contract for Edge Elastic. I've been writing content for them for a few years. So I do blog. I'm sure um, some of the viewers out there, if you're <laughs> my work, you know, I love to blog. It's sort of Actually, it's funny when I get asked to do a blog, that's sort of when I do my deep dive. If, you know, I didn't have time beforehand, <laughs> like <laughs> oh my God, on Saturday, right? Uh, so I made this assessment to, um, I mean, this is what I would, you know, consider something similar to the air. I used something from the public domain. This article is called, Yellow Journalism, the Fake News of the 19th Century. And I just copied and pasted, you know, this article mm -hmm. and made sure that I numbered the paragraphs like they do on the air test. So if they need to go back and refer to a paragraph, they can do that. Um, and if you know, notice question one right here is an A, B part question. Um, the teachers in the crowd, I know that, you know, ELA, um, state test, they love this AB thing. They want you to, they want our kids to know what was the theme or what was the point And then, you know, what, what proves it? Um, those are the first standards in the common core for reading, you know, um, citing and then, you know, determining a theme and being able to connect those things. So what, I was uh, employing in my own practice was making, you know, taking my lessons on whatever I was teaching, uh, be it a book or, you know, info text from Newzella or the public domain and designing a test that would, you know, be asking for the same skills as the air, but maybe a little more interesting or, you know, when you own it as a teacher, you know, it's a little bit more personal, um, to everybody. So uh, the second question right here is about, you know, main ideas of the passage. And this is a, you know, a drag around, like, I'm going to figure out what order this paragraph needs to go in. Oh, wow. That yeah. is really neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, this is stuff I made myself after just learning. You know, I didn't know how to automatically do all of these TEI tech enhanced mm -hmm. items uh, without looking it up. Some of them are easier than others. Uh, if I were a math teacher, I would need many more demos <laughs> on how to <laughs> use the equations and, you know, the crazy stuff they have on there. But um, yeah, you know, like here I'm going for vocab. That's a, a standard that is heavily tested on. And then they always ask for a multi-paragraph essay. Typically, I would have a rubric in this so they could see, mm -hmm. you know, what they were being scored on. It's just rubrics on Edge Elastic are a little bit more tricky to use. I wasn't able to find ones that I had created before um, when I switched my account over to a new district. So I just had to give them a rubric on paper. But I, I usually use the Ohio State test rubric, or I'll give them a four point uh, rubric, just saying, did you restate the question? Did you answer the question? Cite and explain. Now here's a, a picture uh, being added. Um, and you know, this question is why did the author include this specific political cartoon in the passage? 
So, you know, you can give a little caption below it and you just kind of explain, um, I guess, why, you know, you're asking yeah. the kids to sort of be able to recall or, you know, think about why that particular image would be included. So that is, you so know. What, real quick, I had a question here from Amanda. Does Edulastic uh, support uh, open-ended responses? Um, where's a comment at? Ooh, uh, will you, is, do I go into comments right here? Let me see. Oh, uh, yeah, it was just uh, on open-ended oh, yeah. responses. Yes, it does, it does. Um, so what's great about Edge Elastic is, well, what, one thing that's great about Edge Elastic is that it does support open-ended responses. It actually has all of the highlighting tools and masking tools that you would have available on the air. It has text-to-speech. Um, you can select that for all of your students. You can select it for one. Uh, they also have something called groups where you can actually pull out your special education students or say you're writing a report uh, for the state or for a sponsor in charter schools, we are required uh, to have a sponsor and we were, you know, we have to submit information to them. And uh, anyway, these reports are, um, it's valid data to our stakeholders. And I kind of forgot what I was talking about in the middle of that. But that's oh, it. no, you're OK. We were just talking, you know, just the tech enhanced, uh, you know, and of course, it's awesome that we're talking about open ended responses. And I was oh, going to yeah. ask about I was going to ask about supports, too, as well. But you covered that, too, as well. You know that it does offer supports for the students while they're taking assessments. So that's great to know as well. So, yeah. yeah. And, you know, the open ended responses. That's what I. OK, so. It supports those. Absolutely. They look the same as they do on the air test. Um, what I what I do, I can pull up another uh, test real quick while I'm talking about this. But um, what you do is set up the rubric and then you just you uh, script it out just like they would on the air or on whatever state you are in. And you can get, you know, it's usually based on like two passages or something like that. But let me see, um, using the rubrics and providing student feedback, um, you know, using that type of question is awesome. It's the only thing on Edge Elastic that doesn't self grade, but uh, it also, you know, uh, it's great to be able to tell students, you know, you got a six out of 10 on this because you forgot to, you know, put a thesis in mm -hmm. whatever the rubric may say, you ding them on it exactly. And you can reuse those rubrics over and over again. And so like here is, let's see, um, like the writing process being broken down and what I like to do is, you know, add videos of exemplars so they can see exactly what they need wow. to do. Wow. And then I'll pop out an assignment. Wow. Um, so you can actually so embed those videos in there for the students to view, give mm -hmm. them an example, and then they continue with the test. That is that is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That and is then you great, can put them thing. in uh, – yeah, isn't that awesome? So this is a part of a module about writing a source-based essay, and they just go through the intro paragraph, and there's a video for that, a video on thesis statements, and the, the directions are all different. But what you do is, like, take a copy that you already have and clone it, you know, and then you're able to... Uh, use it again and just edit out. Okay, and now I'm talking about body paragraph two. So you don't have to make everything from scratch every time. It's sort of like using and reusing Google um, classroom assignments. So here's another open ended. Um, you know, sometimes I would reduce it to four to five sentences instead of a multi paragraph essay to be, uh, you know, a little bit more reasonable. <laughs> yes. No, I totally get that. Totally. I was really 12th graders to 6th graders when I created this. So uh, something that's been nice over time is that I've actually been able to take my assessments and 
um, you know, add multimedia to them. And also, you know, I've been able to change them to increase or decrease the rigor and make, uh, you know, different uh, modifications for students that yeah. go through greatly and sync, you know, perfectly into, into classroom. And I think so, that's great. Like, I mean, what a tool. I mean, the way that you explained it and you shared and just being able to create those tests. And then, like you said, what I loved is once that test is there, you clone it, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And then slowly you can continue to go in and add, remove and adjust. And now you're showing us some of the reporting. So that's cool, too, as well. Yeah, uh, the reporting is amazing. <laughs> so I'm trying to be careful. I'm not going to show any student names here. But um, so what you see these, I'm going to give myself a full screen. Um, this is relatively new. The reporting system was great before, but now it's even better. So um, here are, it's called the insights section. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to go into common assessment because I want to see how my kids did on this common assessment because I'm using this data to create a report or to create a, st a school improvement goal or something like that. And, you know, I can go in, the grade levels are a little bit uh, irrelevant to my situation at this point, just because with language arts, you can really uh, sort of, you know, anything language arts counts as language arts, as long mm -hmm. as they get the, um, you know, and ELA one and two and pass those tests. Um, there's not much of a sequence involved. It's just the continuum of the, you know, the rigor moving up as the standards go up. Hey, Samantha, so we have a quick, we have a quick question here. It says, can you share uh, how you made the content? Did you make this with others? Was this collaborative across PLCs or was this just, just you uh, creating this content? Um, this was actually, uh, me creating this content and, you know, I, I can show the test. I definitely was training teachers to be able to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so we went over pieces of assessment design and, you know, just best practices and how to use this tool to, to grow your kids. Like I would keep telling that millennium story over and over again, 200%. Our value at our growth points went up, you know, <laughs> blah, 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 to attract people to it. But yeah, um, the way I designed it, I'll, I'll pull the blog back up. Um, like right here. Okay. So I actually got a, you know, a set of criteria from my superintendent. He wanted something that was going to be. Um, you know, provide more data than a, a test called Easy CBM, which is only about a 10 minute test. And it's more designed for special education. So we wanted some more in depth uh, data for just the range of students that we had in the building. And um, so what we did was just kind of uh, hash out a plan to the district, get, get approved, you know, what what are we trying to do here on this test? What are we trying to measure? Okay, that's what you want. Okay, I'm going to make this, this test. So all three of these assessments are going to be measuring the same standards with the same amount of, you know, the depth of knowledge will remain consistent as possible. And, you know, the content, um, I'll probably pull from Newzella again. And, um, you know, what I did to create the first assessment was I actually took an assessment I made for eighth graders the year before. Um, and I actually added, you know, some more, I guess, rigorous material to it, changed it around a little bit and, you know, upped the reading level. And then um, I had, you know, a, a brand new part of a test. So that was for about five of the items. Um, the other items, I created sort of, uh, you know, based on the language standards, trying to get some sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, you know, just giving kids opportunities to show, you know, any kind of demonstration of these skills. And then we went all the way up to 12th grade where they were reading a short story by, by Kate Chopin. And they actually did really well on that part. But, uh, oh, I didn't wow. know we were going to. So it was 30 items. 
And, you know, I'm an experienced assessment designer. So um, if that weren't the case, I probably would have used one of the diagnostic tests from Edge Elastic. Um, they already have all of that stuff in their database. So I've just been creating uh, assessments on contract for years and it was just a little challenge for me. And so, um, yeah. Let's see, that, that's the amazing part. And Samantha, I know we're, we are, have already run out of time and I know we still had some, some more to go. However, like I said, you always have an open invite and maybe we can schedule a follow-up, you know, show um, this coming, not, well, not the rest of this month, but maybe in May because I'm already booked. But we'd definitely love to have you back to share some more of these, uh, you know, resources. And of course, I did share all the links to your blogs and they'll be in the show notes. Um, but I'm just really excited. And again, being the first show back, coming off from break, and then just getting to learn so much, you know, you've the blog that you have, definitely full of wakelet treats in there, the edgy sauce that you brought today. And definitely edgy elastic is definitely something that I'm going to look into a little bit more and take that deeper dive because I love the tech enhanced questions, the way that you are able to create the assessments. Mm -hmm. And I loved everything that you explained that how you can just pull the groups. You, I mean, it, it seems yeah. like it's a, it's a very, very great tool. So I'm definitely going to be sharing that blog too with a lot of my educator friends and see, you. Uh, you know, if that could be a solution for us as well. So thank you so much for your time, Samantha. Thank you. I really appreciate letting me be on the show. It was a great show. And oh, yeah, you no. I mean, I'm so sorry yeah. I didn't look at the chat the whole time, but I, um, you can get a hold of me on Twitter at Samantha Chapman too. I'm sure he'll throw those things yeah. in there. Deb, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it was amazing. I mean, just a wealth of information. Amanda, Deb, Omar, Mel, and everybody else that's watching or is going to rewatch the show. All of these links will be definitely there on uh, the show notes. Uh, that way you can go ahead and get your hands on all that blog and all that edgy sauce goodness. And again, don't please don't forget, those of you that are watching this on YouTube, please give us a like, subscribe to our channel. Also, go visit our show page here at myedtech.life, myedtech.life, and you can actually visit our store here as well. So again, you can definitely check us out. And of course, Stay Techy Apparel is out. We've got our new line and new collections that we've got here. So you can definitely stop by our store and check those out. But again, just go to myedtech.life and check out the rest of our shows. And again, just really excited to be back. I definitely feel re-energized and we've got a great month lined up. And of course, you just start, you just saw the start of the month. So this is the fire that we're trying to bring to everyone to just continue to fan and spark that flame with passionate educators such as Samantha that are here sharing just their journey, sharing their passions because they want to help other educators. So make sure that you connect with them, follow them on Twitter. I will put all that information there, give them a follow, reshare their stuff, get in contact with them and they'll be able to answer their, que your questions. And, you know, same thing with us, you know, you can contact me and if I don't know an answer, I'll definitely connect you with somebody that can definitely help you with what you're striving to do. So thank you guys again so much. You guys enjoy your Saturday with your families, whatever it is that you're doing, make it a great weekend. And until next time, my friends, don't forget, stay techie. Ooh.